What if I told you that you could go plant-based one day per week and have some pretty powerful effects on your body composition? A lot of my devout followers might look at me like I'm a little bit crazy, okay? Because I'm talking about the ketogenic diet a lot, which a lot of people associate with high amounts of meat and high amounts of fat, which in some parts is true, in some parts is not. And then other people know me for being the fasting guy. And they're probably wondering, okay, what is Thomas talking about when he's talking about short-term vegan diets? Well, for a very long period of time, I practiced doing what was called meatless Mondays, where I would take one day per week and I would eat a vegan style diet. And I was doing this for a couple of reasons. One, I would do it for ethical reasons, but two, I was also doing it because there are some pretty powerful effects and I felt pretty darn good even after just one day. Now, let me completely come out and be open when I say that I'm not necessarily condoning that everyone needs to go plant-based long-term. What I'm trying to talk about here is that there are some powerful benefits if you wanna pick one day per week and going plant-based. Now, hear me out on this. A lot of it simply has to do with looking at our diet at a bigger scale. You see, a lot of us focus on our diets as just one day at a time. We focus on how many calories we consume in one day, what kind of minerals, what kind of vitamins we get in one day, and then it just resets the next day. The thing is, aside from our circadian rhythm, our bodies don't really know what one day is or what two days are or what three days are. Ultimately, what we wanna do is we wanna back up and look at our diet over a broader scale. So if we're not getting a lot of veggies over the course of each day, then maybe if we back up for a second, we allow ourselves to get a lot of veggies in on one day, we could have a sustained positive result that is a response to that. So what I mean by that is, rather than looking at it day over day, look at it week over week. And so if you take one day where you're focusing on going plant-based, sure, you could get some benefits that come from just eating a plant-based diet, but the massive amount of benefits that are gonna to come to you as someone that necessarily isn't vegan are gonna be much more so the fact that you're getting a lot of veggies in at one point in time, and it's restoring a lot of your mineral values and your vitamins in terms of water soluble and fat soluble. So to make some sense of this, I do wanna reference a couple of studies. Okay, they're both relatively short-term studies. One is longer than the other, but they both prove a little bit of a point. Now hear me out entirely on this, because it's very important you pay attention. There was a 2011 study that took a look at individuals that went plant-based over the course of 10 weeks. Of course, they compared this plant-based diet group to a control group. Now, what the control group ate, we don't really know. Were they eating a keto diet? No. Were they eating some kind of fasting diet? No. They were probably eating a standard American diet. But anyway, what they found after the course of 10 weeks was pretty interesting. Those that went on the plant-based diet did end up having a massive reduction when it came down to visceral body fat at 1.6%. They ended up having a 13.4% reduction in overall body fat they ended up having about a 12 pound on average weight loss and they had a lot of biomarkers that were improved. Now here's the thing, after the course of 10 weeks is when people would ordinarily start to get more deficient in certain things by going plant-based. So because this is a 10 week diet, it was able to take place before a lot of potential vegan deficiencies would take place. So we have to factor that into the equation as well. Well what I didn't mention in that study was that there was a 4.6% increase in muscle mass. How does that equate? Protein levels were likely lower, and there was probably a lot less in the way of stimulation for protein synthesis. Well, again, it's a short-term plant-based diet where you had a massive infusion of vitamins and minerals that you ordinarily wouldn't get. So thereby, you were probably able to sustain the minerals that you needed to grow a little bit more muscle, getting the right balance that's allowing your body to have the opportune amount of nutrients to really synthesize protein at that given point in time. Would this continue over the long term? Honestly, likely not, unless you were able to apply some very intense protein combinations and be able to be very cognizant of the kinds of omegas that you're getting in to keep everything balanced. Okay, so now let's talk about something that's a little bit more relevant. This is a study that took a look at plant-based diets over the course of seven days. And the reason that I'm saying this is in proof that you can have positive effects on even a short-term plant-based diet. So let's take a look at this. This study was published in Nutrition Journal in 2014. It took 1,615 participants that went plant-based for about seven days. Well, what they found was pretty intriguing. They did find that after seven days, there was a pretty dramatic decrease in overall blood cholesterol levels. Well, it goes to show that inflammation does play a role in cholesterol levels. Now, it wasn't concluded that it was a decrease in fat intake, but there was some conclusion that since inflammation levels were reduced so dramatically, it made the levels of blood lipids that much lower. Inflammation does have a direct relationship with our levels of cholesterol in the blood. 
Now, there was also a massive decrease in fasting blood glucose, which is interesting because even with this plant-based diet, there was probably an increase in carbohydrate consumption, which goes to show that perhaps the fiber and the prebiotics that are coming in from the influx of vegetables could have played a big role in your fasting blood glucose. And lastly, the average weight loss over the course of seven days was three pounds. That's pretty darn powerful. Now, essentially what I'm getting at with this approach is that you don't necessarily have to go seven full days of eating plant-based. But if you can just indoctrinate one day per week over the course of seven days, you may end up having the same cumulative effect that people saw in this study happening over the course of seven weeks. So if on average participants ended up losing about three pounds over the course of seven days, we could conceivably say that over the course of seven weeks, if you go one day per week going plant-based, that you might lose the same amount of weight and have similar results. Now, that's totally a hypothesis, so I can't say that that's true for certain, but there is a massive positive impact by having that increase in veggie consumption. In fact, researchers actually concluded with that study that the positive results were more so linked to the massive influx of veggies than any potential plant-based lifestyle. So the point is here is that if you go one day per week in a vegan lifestyle, you can get the massive amount of veggies that you need to start feeling better. So here's a couple of tips that you can do when you do your meatless Mondays or you choose one day per week to go plant-based, if it's something that you choose to do. Okay, the first thing is going to be making sure that you get a bunch of algal oil in. That is a form of docosahexaenoic acid that comes from a vegan source. Very, very important that you get your omega-3s. It's one of the most common vegan deficiencies to not have the right omega-3 profile simply because a lot of those omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids end up coming from fish sources. Okay, the other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you supplement with something like pea protein. You're still going to want to make sure, especially if you're training hard, especially if your body's accustomed to a little bit more protein, that you're getting protein coming from at least a pea or a rice source. I highly recommend using a pea protein instead. The other thing that you're going to want to do is since you're consuming a lot of veggies, you're going to want to be cognizant to not consume a lot of prebiotic fiber. Okay, that means go a little bit easy on the asparagus, go easy on the artichokes and things like that. The reason is those are a little bit harder to digest and they're harder to digest for a reason. Okay, prebiotic fibers sit in your stomach and they sort of ferment. That's the whole idea. They help breed bacteria in a good way, but sometimes in a bad way if you're not adjusted to it. So you want to stick with the mildly starchy vegetables. I don't mean starchy carbs. I don't mean cereals. I don't mean pasta. I don't mean things like that. I mean the starchier vegetables, things like zucchini, things like squash, if you're going to do that. This is perfectly okay on a ketogenic diet as well. Lastly, when it comes down to your workouts on your meatless Mondays or on your plant-based days, you're going to want to keep them a little bit lighter. Okay? You don't want to be triggering a lot of inflammation within the body by lifting super heavy because it kind of negates the whole purpose of going plant-based for that day. So you want to keep your workouts a little bit easier, keep it in the 15 to 20 repetition range if you're weight training, or better yet, just leave it as a cardio day since more than likely your calories are going to be a little bit lower as well. So there you have it. Take it or leave it. You don't have to do this, but it's something that I do recommend when it comes down to trying to get an influx of veggies into your diet, even if it's just one day a week. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't eat veggies the other six days. I'm just saying most Americans, or most people in general, don't get enough veggies as is. So this is one way to get a massive injection of them. As always, I will see you in the next video and let me know if you have any ideas for future vids.